off in third gear, low RPMs. That way we know it hooks up, traction control on. It pulls so good at the top of third and fourth gear. God, it's a blast. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Behind me is a beautiful red C7 Z06. Very common car that we build here at Late Model Racecraft. This one is equipped with a 1.7 liter supercharger. As you know, there are several different ways and combinations to add more horsepower to this platform. The car behind me checks all the boxes for a stock supercharger. All right, the first thing you see when you pop the hood of this thing is the sexy billet valve covers with the coil pack relocation. As you can see, it cleans up the engine bay tremendously without having the coil pack sitting on top of the valve covers. And know that we offer this setup for every LT package that we sell. And when it comes to performance on this thing, as you can see under the hood, we have our five inch cold air intake. We have an ATI overdrive balancer, supercharger pulley, which is obviously a little bit smaller than the factory. We always run American racing stainless steel headers with high flow catalytic converters, um, flex fuel sensors. So this car can run on 93 octane or straight E85. And again, guys, that's one of the main things about this car. Um, is you can run 93 or straight E85 um, without having any methanol kit or anything to check on your car. Um, we do have a P3 gauge in there just so the customer can see the ethanol content, but this car can run straight E85. So things that you can't see on this car, looking under the hood, is obviously our cam kit, which is cam, springs, retainers, push rods, uh, aftermarket lifters. You cannot see the race ported supercharger, which is also a big key in this thing making big horsepower. Um, the supercharger alone, we go inside and hollow it out so much that we have to put a big 103 millimeter throttle body on it. And also we have, because we're spinning the supercharger so hard, I say in a lot of my videos, these superchargers gotta keep them efficient. You spin these little 1.7 liter superchargers hard, intake air temps climb, you lose horsepower. So in this particular build, we put a bigger heat exchanger up front, and then we also add a nice tank in the back. So for you guys out there just driving around the weekends, the extra two and a half gallons of coolant running through this, the system, just normal driving and making highway pulls, keeps the intake air temps down. If you're drag racing it, or if you are at a gas station roll racing, you can open this, you can drain it, and put ice in this thing, and keep the intake air temps 120 degrees or less depending on how much of a pull you're making whether you're highway racing or half mile racing is a big plus to have this when we spin that little supercharger so hard and again in this case that little 1.7 liter supercharger is making over 900 rear wheel horsepower on e85 and i know i mentioned this thing is not running on methanol so another thing that you cannot see on this thing which does add to i say you're jumping off the cliff to add more money to get the fuel that we need to support that kind of horsepower, we have to go with a bigger mechanical fuel pump and larger direct injecting, direct injectors. So this car still is a factory running car with direct injection. There's no added port injection to it. There's no meth added to it. This car starts up and runs like a factory car would. And like I said, we have a P3 gauge in there just for the customer to see the ethanol content, but there's nothing more that you, the customer, have to do at home to maintain this car, check it out before you race it. You literally put gas in it, start it up and go. Whether you want 93 octane or E85. The only difference is gonna be about 100 to 120 rear wheel horsepower. 93 octane, this thing makes right around 800 rear wheel horsepower. E85 over 900, which is sick on a 1.7 liter supercharger. To start off the build, I've removed the stock LT4 blower and I'm preparing to install the Kong Performance exported blower in its place. Later in the build, I will replace the valve covers with our custom LMR engraved valve covers, which uh, will require us to move the coil packs into the fenders, creating a much cleaner engine bay. Right now, I am moving the cooling fittings and the pulley over to the new blower for install. So, uh, Brian X 
explain to us uh, what's the deal with this uh, tank back here. What you want to know about it? What is this big dang box back here? Big dang box? It's a water box that we put ice in sometimes and it moves all that cold water up to the blower where it becomes very, very hot and then it comes back to get cold again. So it lowers your... Yeah, it lowers your uh, intake air temperature for the supercharger. Okay. Yep. So you can go faster? So, yep. So you can go faster. Colder air means faster sometimes. So you put uh, water and also some coolant or whatever. Yeah, I'm not going to do coolant. Or... I'm going to do water and an additive for corrosion. That way it can be drained at the drag strip and, uh, you know, won't... Uh, won't piss off anybody who is green-minded, if you know what I mean. Is that the drain nozzle right there? Yes, yeah, that's the drain. So now, it's empty right now. And then it just pours right out underneath it, right? That's right. Right here. Away from the tire a little bit, at least. Uh, but you can back off into a spot where it's okay to leave a puddle, open it up, to, just to make some room for the ice. You can see it's deeper, it's much deeper than where the drain is. So there's still going to be plenty of water to keep the pump submerged, but that will allow you to drain enough water to add as much ice as you can fit without spilling over. So. Looks good, nice and smooth. Thank you. Almost cleaned up and finished. Got to lubricate these threads a little bit, clean up some of the carpet a little better, and. Fill it up. <laughs> what do you think, you have a desk job now? I've made one. <laughs> so wow. you know what the hell with all this wrenching, I'm going back <laughs> to the desk. It's so smart sitting there like that. That, that is my biggest feat of the day, looking smart. <laughs> <laughs> That's my win. <laughs> Brian is doing a valve cover coil pack relocation. All yep. the uh, coil packs are usually mounted here on the valve cover, so we're getting some sexy LMR valve covers. And so you have to reroute all the wiring and hide the coil packs up in here. Up in here, up in here. Oh, you already mounted it and everything. Yep. God dang, man, you just work fast. You don't even tell me anything. <laughs> You don't even tell me anything anymore. Hey, the other side's not in yet, so you can watch that one. All right. All right, well, there it is. Um, yeah. Hey, hey. What you doing, Todd Albert? <laughs> Still wiring. Or should I say wiring again? All right, so as, as y'all guys know, with a lot of our big builds we do, it's a big engine build, big supercharger build. We like to do a lot of custom stuff here. So a lot of our big engines get nice billet valve covers, billet front covers, superchargers get nice billet lids. Um, not only does it affect horsepower on some of the stuff we do, it's also about aesthetics and how good I like our cars and packages to look. Um, for this case, we have I think like five cars in the shop right now getting our new valve covers with the coil pack relocated. So under the hood of these cars, my main problem, you see the coil packs on top of the valve covers, just like the LS's back in the day. So now we install the nice valve covers with our name on them. You can get them in billet, all billet, or you can do this one like powder coated with the billet gone through with our name on it. And then the coil packs are relocated in the fenders so you don't see any coil packs on top of the valve covers. No ugly mess. Looks way cleaner under the hood in my opinion. And I think you'll agree with me, but I'm gonna get out of the way and let him get back to work. All right, off the old.
If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. As always, please comment below. I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, me and Jason, um, we'd love to hear what you have to say, your thoughts on our builds, our goals for what to do for future builds, um, future action shots. Comment below, as always. Until next time, guys. One baby, the stock blower. God, I love it. I called it. We made like 805 yesterday on pump gas. Today on E85, I told Ryan we're making over 900. The stock LT4 blower. I love it. An 805 rear wheel torque and a manual. It's gonna be rowdy as heck. Mr. Gillespie, get ready because you're gonna have your hands full with this one. And she looks so pretty under the hood. I love this build. All right, so one of the most common questions I get asked all the time is what's next? Especially on a car like this that has all the boxes checked with a factory supercharger on it. Um, those of you at home know we offer several different packages. It's just a starting point. Every car we build is really custom for you, the end user. So depending on him, her, or what you identify for that day, we can literally sit down and we talk with you over your goals, whether you are drag racing, roll racing, um, half mile racing. There's several different ways to step this car up. In my opinion, we go with a 2650 supercharger. You can go with a centrifugal supercharger, um, like a pro charger, like a F1X, or you can even go twin turbos. Now that is still utilizing the stock short block. So stock short block, I like to keep this thing around a thousand rural horsepower. You guys wanting more than that, that's when we keep that same supercharger combination, depending on what you're gonna do with it at home. And we had a built motor to it and a built transmission to it with a built drivetrain to hold it. And 1500 rear wheel horsepower is not out of the question. So guys, several different ways to go from here. And this thing, like I said, pretty much has all the boxes checked. Just adding that next supercharger makes it that much greater and that much more to enjoy. Tell me that's not sexy. Oh, that's sexy, sexy, sexy. Oh. All the way around. The way she looks, the horsepower she makes. All right, now we get to go have fun with her on the street when the weather gets better. <laughs> hey, Steven. <laughs> <laughs>